recording has started. Uh, we plan or plan team weekly. Uh, start off with Gabe. Uh, hey, uh, just want to give an update for it looks like the F121 headcount. Um, looks like we're going to get three new engineers for certify, a new back end engineering manager for plan. And then we've also requested three additional engineers that are, I think are in a contingency phase, which I'm not exactly sure what that means, but I think it's basically uh, if we hit certain benchmarks as a company in terms of like revenue growth, that sort of thing, then we may be able to get those additional three at some point. So it's not as many people as we had hoped for, which means I think we're going to have to <clears throat> take a slightly different mentality this year uh, and like ruthless, ruthlessly prioritize things and like work on getting more efficient from a process standpoint so that we can um, make meaningful progress, which I think and at the end of the day, we should be able to do, so I'm not too worried about it, but um, yeah, Donald, what were you gonna add to that? Yeah, so a couple points. Um, they're marked as three new backend engineers for certify. It's my understanding that that doesn't necessarily mean we have to get three backend engineers for certify. Um, if we decide throughout the year that we need um, we have more of a need for a front end engineer for project management. Um, we can switch that around when the when the time comes. Um, the uh, the main point of the three new engineers is that we have headcount allotment for three engineers within the plan stage. So is that uh, second part is I think the from what I just saw, uh, Tim put out his initial. Um, order of when we're going to hire these three engineers um, and it's lower compared to some of the other stages within dev so we may not actually make our first um, hire until later on in the year um, but that just like the other part is i think uh, uh, flexible um, so if we decide that we need uh, we need someone earlier on i'm sure we can we can push for that cool um but yeah, I think that like uh, I know the proc managers needed to get together and kind of look at the goals for the year and what we originally planned and and adjust the plan a little bit. Um, but I also think this means like we should really focus. I, we can get a lot of love leverage just by improving how we work. Um, and I think there's a lot of uh, it's a good exercise to go through. Um, so that's just something that I want to continue to explore together as a team. Uh, I think I have the next item, big picture updates. Uh, just if you weren't aware, we've officially, like, I guess, gotten the MVC for the Jira importer scoped out and planned. Um, and we should be kicking that off and trying to launch, at least deliver the first piece of that quickly. Um, this is one of those like high priority things that was handed to us from uh, a pie, which is totally fine. Uh, and I think we're going to run with it as far as we can. Um, but this also means we're going to have to make some trade-offs on what we don't work on in the immediate. So we're going to continue exploring that. I think John has the next uh, point to talk about that further. Uh, John, you want to take it away? Yeah, sure. So, um, yeah, we have, what, six issues, I think, four of which we can work in, in parallel on immediately. And there was a question from Eric Brinkman about, you know, um, why put two people on it when we can put four? Uh, well, my question is, um, what are we prepared to drop to make this a success? So I've listed some of the stuff um, we're currently working on, uh, requirements management, MVC, health status and ethics, real-time sidebar, sprint time boxes, and data collection for burn up the burn down charts. But that's only part of it. We have other stuff. We have um, blocking issues, um, diffs and if issue descriptions, we're also collecting mentions for the eventual notification center. So we're doing a lot of stuff. Um, what? So it's a question for the PMs on the call, I guess. What are we prepared to deprioritize to make this a success? I don't want to make that decision. <laughs> um, I think it's worth talking about. Uh, the first question I have is like, what happens, like is, is it beneficial to put four people on one issue at this point when historically we've not even put more than one um like will that be efficient use of people yeah. and their time um if it is deemed it could be like 
I've had the experience where when you're starting something new in an MVC, it's unknown. If you put more than two people on it, you end up like churning until you get to a point where there's clear like uh, groupings of work that can be worked on in parallel. And so I don't want to throw more people on something. Uh, what is it? Brooks law. If like you add more people to a team that's already late, it just makes it later. Like, I don't want to do that. Um, it's not, it doesn't seem smart, but I'll leave it up to you, John and Donald to kind of make that decision. Um, yeah. So I agree. What, 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 <laughs> Especially, I mean, cause we can, we might be able to get away with, like two back-end engineers working on um, the back-end stuff and then two front-end engineers working in parallel. But even at that point, they're going to be working, like on the front-end side, they'd be working on separate. Um, I mean, the only way to do this efficiently would be if they were working on like separate routes or separate parts within the um, within the app. I don't know if there's a whole lot of parallelization that we can do on the front-end. On the back end, I don't know. I kind of, I, I kind of agree with Gabe, but John, you can probably answer that a little bit better. That anything more than two engineers working on the back end, again in separate parts of the the app, um, would be diminished returns. Yeah, I mean we have the work split out into separate parts of the app, so it is possible to do it. But my feeling on it is that it's not just that you you're going to be writing code you have to keep all the state in your mind as well so every engineer working on it has to understand the parts around their part not just the part that they're working on so there's all this overhead as well so honestly like i i think two people is probably fine but we are still going to have to drop some things that are in progress um and i just wanted to to put it out there in a call where all three uh, pms are on um, so that you know you can work it out fairly amongst yourselves or however you want to do it but but nevertheless we will have to to we will have to have some risk of stuff slipping that we expected to do in 12.9 and 12.10 that simply won't happen i mean from my experience i think our best bet is to understand you know if you can parallelize work and you need additional resources then let's make the call sooner rather than later to cut something and just say it's cut let's not try to linger on like you said, there's four or five other things. If we're going to cut something, let's just completely cut it and free those people up sooner rather than later, rather than get six things that are partially done. <laughs> I'd rather see of that list you have there, three things that get run to completion and then nothing else than six things that get half completed, I guess is where I'm going. Well, let's start off with... Is this the actual priority list? Um, is it Jira import, requirements management, health status, real time, sprint, time boxes, and burn up, burn down charts? That's not in any particular order. I just it uh, seems off the top of least, my mind. Yeah. <laughs> it, I mean, in looking at it, it doesn't look like a bad priority list. To be fair, I, I mean, we can definitely debate things. I know that. You know, Jira importer is coming from on high. That is something that's incredibly important. I also know that requirements management is under a ton of scrutiny. So those two to me, I know are up there in the list. I can't speak necessarily to relative priority to the other ones. We'd have to probably sit down and, and churn through that. But yeah, I think maybe, that's probably the key point is to provide a priority list. Maybe we this is the right time to go and flesh out our spreadsheet that we started that has the opportunities on there and maybe convert that to use cases and put some sort of value on each one. Um, cause like I can know like sprints and burn up charts are, I like revenue generating features immediately, um, or more or less like are blocking people from using plan in their companies. So like, I think this is where, if we're going to do this, we need to have like an agreed upon prioritization framework and how we're going to put value on these different things and, um, like communicate that not just with the three of us as product managers but also like with justin and with eric and whoever else just like say hey like here's how we're making decisions and so that they understand the implications um because if you could like put a dollar amount on each of these it would help them also see like here's w w what decision we're making by prioritizing your importer over these other things so i'll schedule time for the three pms and for justin for us to hop on a call and like synchronously work on that format um yeah i think we need to help them with something now though right so if we think about 
feature function value driving items like notifications and real time sidebar. How high on the on the list are those? Uh, the, sorry, th just there's one thing about the the sidebar, and that's that it's um it's work that involves multiple teams, and it's taken a long time to to reach decisions. And now that it's underway, for example, we have to make some changes to the reverse proxy. We have to make some changes to Omnibus to include it for self hosted self hosted customers. So that's a little bit of an outlier in that, like there, I believe there'd be extra cost. To putting that aside because if we put it aside now it'll take a long time to ramp it back up i'd actually say the same with requirements management but for different reasons um i don't know if that helps at all but i think the sprint time boxes we can probably push a little bit there's some people that are gonna be able to happy about that especially high paying customers but i'm also not happy with the proposed solution and that it's not it's not the right one like it, it will solve mm -hmm. 60% of the problems, but it also, and I'll talk about this a little bit further when I ask for feedback on it, but that one we can probably shelve the, um, the data collection and the burn up chart. I, like that's been, we've missed four yeah. releases for that. I think we need to get it done. Um, I'd agree with that. We could probably side table the migration stuff and for notifications and pick that back up when we have a little bit of extra capacity. Uh, that's like, that's been like a long running theme, but it's not, uh, like urgent matter. Um, so I don't know if that helps, but I, I do agree with the real time stuff. Like we need to get the base underlying functionality working. If we're at that point where it's finally moving, I don't want to like kill the momentum there. Um, even though it's not like dramatically going to impact revenue in the next release or two, it's like one of those underlying things that we have to have in place for our overarching strategy and usability of the product to be where we want it to be in a year. So. Yeah, so this is an interesting exercise just because this is the first, um, since we split up, this is kind of the first issue that's really like cross, uh, cross group touching. Mm -hmm. um, so I don't know if, I don't know. I, I think this is a good exercise, but I think each of you three PMs um, should really uh, go through and prioritize um, what we currently have in the backlog. And then maybe we can just remove like the bottom, um, the bottom ask or the bottom, the lowest priority item um, from each of the, the groups. And then we make the JIRA importer just be the top priority for each group. You know, does that make sense? Mm -hmm. like, and I think from this list, yeah. I don't know. I don't know if we can we can drop anything from this list outside of maybe the time boxes, uh, like Gabe said. Can I can I ask a question? Do we have any feedback from the engineers that would be working on the Jira import? If dropping only one would help on achieving the goal of delivering it on twelve point nine, and also in regards to like uh, how many people should work on a specific issue. I think this should be better answered by the developers themselves than by the managers. That's that would be my take. Good point. Alexandru. <laughs> well, so first off, do we think it's a possibility that this can get, that we can get the MVC complete in 12.9? That's, that's a question to me that's a tough one. Like I, I did look into it, but I don't have a, a, a certain estimation that we'll do it in 12.9. No, I, I don't think the impetus is to get it done in 12.9. I think it's to get it started, to get, get it, it moving. Started. Yeah, yeah we, I mean, I have something started. I started it on it today. I, I'll have something to look at. Like, I don't know, there's, there's something by the end of the week, but it's definitely not something to be called in this year though. Uh, but yeah, it's really there. There is quite a bit of work, and I'll I'll know more in a couple of days. Um, I do have stumbled already on like I know there is like I don't know much about Jira. I need to investigate a lot on API, but there seems to be that they can define a lot of uh, statuses on the issue where we should map them, and and because they are like customly defined, 
I'm not exactly sure how we're going to map, which one is going to map to which state in, in GitLab. So that's one just small thing that needs to be investigated, but I'm not sure how many of those um, I'm going to, to, to stumble upon. Them. So um, yeah, I, like in a couple of days, I should have something more uh, there. But. Cool. When you run across those weird things, you can always uh, like ask the question in the Jira feature channel and I can help jump on that too and like look into it because I, I stumbled across the same thing where there's a ton of like different statuses there's not just open in progress and closed there's like 35 or 40 different <laughs> statuses that all map to different meanings so um i'm happy to help sort that stuff out with you whenever you get there all right i'll drop some some lines there I have also some concerns of like uh, starting something new while we have a lot uh, in progress. Having to stop things that have already started means that we will simply be starting more things than finishing, which is a huge problem. So I would like to understand more the reason for dropping things that have already started to start something else than finishing what is already in progress and starting something new when we have delivered what is already in progress? Uh, I can give you the reason where we were told we have to, more or less. Um, yeah. Like yeah. That's, that, that, that's not a very good reason, but yeah. I, no, yeah. I, I, know, I know the the underlying reason why is there uh, right now as the company is getting ready to go public, um, we have to make the decision, no go, go decision by May 18th, which is not that long away. Sid has identified, I guess, the list of 18 plus things that he calls efficiency improvements that he believes are key drivers and that we need to deliver uh, as soon as possible. Literally, the biggest priority across the entire company is what he says. They have daily standups about it. Um, and the your JIRA issue importer is on that list of 18 items. Um, that's the context of where it came from and why it's believed to be critical for the company to go public and has to be shipped as soon as possible. Thanks for clarifying. Um, I share that concern as well, Valmir. Uh, by anything we delay will take longer to pick up again and start running with. Um, but it's a simple fact that if we allow current running things to complete before asking engineers to take up the Jira importer stuff, we simply won't make 12.10. All the evidence shows, like just all the, our past velocity just shows that we won't make it. So yeah, this is our only ch only, uh, only choice really, if we want to make it by 12.10. Yeah, I'll, I'll think it's a good thing to, to bring out. I just want you guys to know that we hear that or that we hear that um and i would strongly suspect this will not be a it's not a regular occurrence this is not a, a normal function that we we're gonna what we want to foster so um we, we understand and we hear you that it's it's uncomfortable for for all of us <laughs> um and it's it's been a little bit of a interrupt cycle but um we'll get it done for, yeah. for what is worth i don't think we need like four people on the back end for sure but like one other person working on it, like two two people who should be more than enough, I guess. And and even the second one might be like partly involved, at least for for like being able to cover in case I just need to take a day off or something like that. Um, but yeah, I don't think we need four people on on the back end, especially for the MVC to to be working on. So just to get that out of the way and and kind of question, I don't think we need that many people working there. That's excellent feedback. I mean, to be honest, the things that have slowed us down in the past, I think, have been reviews for, you know, any sort of database reviews and those types of things. I think our efficiency gains may be best utilized by ensuring that there's proper support for the back end and the front end teams, as in more people, and then figuring out how we're going to expedite the rest of the process surrounding the work. Yeah, if anything, like helping with, with the reviews from the whole team would, would really help, I guess, to just speed it up, uh, sort of the process, not not as much as the development, but like getting through the review. So um, I, wait, I wait for me pinging you guys. Uh. 
Yeah, so that that's a great point. Um, since this is such a high priority item, not just within our stage, but for the organization, once we get something in review, use myself and John, and we'll bring in anyone else we have to, to, to use some of our, I don't know, our, our collateral to get things moving um, quickly in review. So like once something gets into review, um, go ahead and, and ping us and we can keep on the review process to make sure that you get feedback quickly. Um, we'll work through and figure out as far as time zones, because um, ideally we can get someone that has bandwidth to look at reviews right after, right when it's ready. Um, so just just use us and we can help guide um, guide things through that process. Yeah, create the create stage is also volunteered to help with reviews um, and prioritize those. So we have support from other teams, which is nice. <clears throat> I was cool. just wondering those um those eighteen things if they're all fundamentally features that teams somewhere are working on whether it would be helpful if the company in general had visibility of those and that way if you're a reviewer and one of those things lands you know it's you know P one similarly from a support perspective you know we know these things are coming down the line and we can expect there to be some some significant interest from customers yeah not all of them were features um here i i'm pasting this in number number nine if any i mean it's public to the company so uh anybody can look at it um but yeah they're not all features some of them are like a jenkins importer is another one that's got prioritized uh or a jenkins wrapper i guess um other small things like reducing CI minutes for, for core for free, um, limit storage and free, just like a bunch of different things. So this is this list. You can look at it. They have a meeting about it every day or stand up about it every day. <clears throat> so it looks like there's now 31 things on it. So <laughs> yeah. Is this an order of priority? Uh, I don't think so. Um, cool. Uh, all right. I might have to drop in just a minute, um, for another meeting with a customer. There's, I, I put down here too, a couple like bugs type issue things, performance things that need to be addressed as well, thrown into the mix. And then Keenan also linked a couple critical bugs that need to be addressed in a timely manner. Uh, T-Mobile got hit with the performance stuff on the filter bar, um, and the database query that's not optimized. Then we have a uh, performance problem one comments um, on merge requests and probably issues as well. So just know those are where, and it looks like there's also, Keen, if you want to talk about those critical bugs by CAD members, that's exist too. So. Yeah. So I think they're already, they're already in flight. So I was just calling them out that we used to make sure we get them across the line. I think it's, it's really just comes down to the performance bugs around the Epic tree and handling the creation or addition of issues to the, to an Epic. Um, they were, you can see, if you go through it and read the, the comments, they were looking forward to those updates and waited for a couple releases for them. And then they were uh, fairly frustrated when uh, they didn't operate properly. So um, there is a cab meeting coming up. <laughs> there's a virtual one in like an hour, but uh, the one, there's one in April that, uh, you know, we're gonna have to shake that guy's hand. So, uh, or fist bump because of health concerns, but uh, we should, uh, we, we just need to get those done because it's not only causing problems for like big customers, but it's causing hard uh, adoption issues internally as well. So. Cool, okay, Gabe, yeah, before you have to leave, you wanna hit on. Yeah, this kind of goes back to the sprints time box thing and why like I'm not happy with it right now. So like the basic proposals it stands is to put uh, sprints as a, like another time box that you know you can turn on in a group or that's already on by default in a group or a project. The whole point of having a sprint and being able to do sprints is so that you can measure velocity one from one sprint to another. Mm -hmm. And if you look at that whimsical diagram, this is like the basic brain teaser problem that is like hard to solve given our current constructs in the product, um, like if, if we as a team, let's say the plan stage want to have our own sprint uh, and let's say the managed stage wants to have their own sprint and we both like, because of the way the group structure works, we have to do that either 
on the project itself or at the top level group dot uh, org group, um, we would be running the, the two sprint so sprint objects, but they wouldn't be related. They would be for different teams. And so you still can't calculate the velocity for each team. You couldn't have like a workflow for our team and a workflow for their team. Um, and so like the, the underlying construct was like, I, I'm not sure how to solve this, like at a fundamental level within the product, like the idea of it's great, but it's also usually in other products, it's scoped to a project, which has a specific team or it's scoped to a specific team of people, which we don't have that in GitLab. Um, and so like, I don't want to just rush forward and build this into the product if it's not really going to solve the underlying problems and it's not scalable to accomplish the customer jobs that we intended it to. So I didn't know if anybody had any thoughts about how to solve this. <laughs> I'd like to have a bigger discussion about it because I think we've been testing with users just more of the UI and not necessarily whether or not we're addressing the right problem. That would have been done prior to my coming on board with it, but I'm happy to talk about it a little bit more. We're addressing the right problem. The, 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 the underlying construct is that like the plan team, where would the plan team have a sprint that was just reported issues that was the plan teams and where would the managed team have a sprint that just reported the issues for the managed team. And then how would we know that like, if they're in the same area that like it's the plan team sprints to calculate velocity from, from one to the next, you know, without adding like a bunch of labels and filtering labels and like all this other stuff that we have to do on every other view. And we don't have the concept of a team? No. No. Well, and then I think we also have an, an interesting internal problem with it simply because it's a shared project across <laughs> the org, right? So oftentimes in other tools and other companies, it's milestones are like, a, you know, Holly just pointed out, are often associated directly with the team. And then those teams are usually associated with uh, one or a few projects or repos or however you want to phrase it. So um, our construct breaks that a little bit. So I think that, I guess, just some context on why this is a, a head scratcher. Yeah, and I don't have any answers or solutions, but I will definitely um, add that it is something we should solve for because um, when Spotify kind of made the whole cross-functional team uh, approach popular, one of their biggest things were that teams are autonomous um, and should be able to have their own sprint, sprint lengths um, essentially have their own workflows and you're right. We have no way of accounting for that. And that's how a majority, well, maybe not a majority, but a lot of our customers are going to, um, want to, uh, want to handle team workflows. Yeah. So that, this is like why if we want to get people to switch over to plan, we have to solve for this problem. So, uh, is the next action, should I schedule like just an open forum? for us to discuss this in like an office hour type format or what would be the best format to work together on this? I think that'd be good. And then if we come with a couple like straw examples of saying, look, we can put it here, we can put it here, we can put it here, pros, cons, just to have conversation starters. And then um, as a group, like point out what doesn't, what wouldn't work, what would be complicated, what would be hard. And then we can try to maybe come up with a, some paths there. That sounds good. Um, and then Gabe, I know you have to leave, but your last point around whip limits. Yes, we should definitely document what they are. Um, I think we have a little bit of documentation in the um, group backend uh, pages. And then we have a little section in the group um, or in the stage front end engineering section. Um, we should probably have it just in the plan page that you link to. Um, I can take that on to stub it a little bit more. Um, and that would be great if you had that video because I think that'd be helpful for others. Yeah, uh, I'll, I, it's based on queuing theory. So I can like, uh, I'll record a video that kind of explains that a little bit and then I'll add to your MR further that you stub out. All right, I got to drop. Cool. Thanks everyone. Thank I really appreciate you all. We appreciate you. Well, you didn't get to hear that. <laughs> okay. Uh, Donald. <laughs> um, anyone have anything else? No? 
Um, I mean, so I know we were talking about, but uh, do we do we feel like the team has what they need to keep moving forward on the importer without it being blocked, slowed down, or encumbered? I think so. Uh, John created a bunch of issues this morning. This my morning. Um, my that morning. we your morning also. <laughs> which is my really early. Um, I went in there and added some front end work. Um, I know Alexandria is doing some, a uh, little bit more investigation into, um, into more detailed requirements for each of those issues. Um, so I think we have a plan for that. Um, and we are already starting to, like Alexandria I think is, and he is in the call, on the call still. Um, but I think that's your priority right now is, is going through the, the Jira importer. I'm, I'm, I actually started today working on a sort of a proof of concept just to get the, the workflow, so to say, in place. Uh, but yeah, so far, like I said, I, I, at least I stumbled on, on mapping the, uh, the states. And as we discussed, just using the author as the importer and so on. So there is more stuff coming, but for the MVC, this is the next kind of thing. Right now, I, I've just set it to import everything as open issues, which is not mm -hmm. great, obviously. Uh, but yeah. No, that's great progress. That's really good to hear. And I just want to echo what Gabe said. Like, as you run into anything, or even if you just like want to showcase what you pulled off and what you got done, just drop it in that Slack channel. Like, we'd, we'd love to see it. And then that helps us kind of communicate up as well. And hopefully, that will reduce any. Uh, friction. <laughs> yeah, that's the plan to use the um, review app. That yeah. have requests. So uh, once I have anything deployed, I'll, I'll be with this. So. That's awesome. And, Thank uh, you. Uh, so that we're not reporting up in multiple paths. Um, John's also uh, doing a weekly update for Christopher. You should definitely at least look at that because you may be able to use the same information when you have to when you report up on the product side cool yeah it's going to be mostly uh it'll be more technical i guess but uh the six issues that are on that epic currently i think almost all of them have some un unanswered questions in the description some of them are technical some of them are uh could be answered by a pm okay. so please do have a look through and see if there's anything you can answer um, one example would be, for example, in the original, in the Epic description, it um, has a requirement that new projects and existing projects uh, can import issues. But the solution that we currently have that's the easiest to build is to do it for an existing project. So the person creates a project, then they add the credentials, and then they issue the import. So if we're going, you know, if we're going with that one, it's much easier. We can get to work quicker. But we need to know, for example, how strict is that uh, requirement, right? So, so questions like that, that if we can just get quick answers to unblock the things and get them into ready for development, then. Yeah, no, for sure. I'll go look at that one and clean it up because I think it, that probably might just be a copy pasta issue. Um, but of course, at any time, if there is a question, um, as you can imagine, we get tons of notifications and pings and we'll keep us on the top of stack. But if there is something that needs an answer, just ping us right away. Anybody who's working on it, we'll, we'll one of us will in there help cool yeah but i think the I'll only other thing on sorry the only other thing is that we're planning to have a synchronous call with the people who built the github importer i'm not quite sure who that is yet but i presume it's the group import mm -hmm. team uh just because we'll be sharing some code with them and we want to share as much as possible so we don't have to write it ourselves so yeah no that sounds yeah. great That's the when is that I haven't planned it yet, but oh, okay. hopefully by the end of this week, like it's in, in the uh, update to Christopher Leffoltz, there are like a set of objectives for each update. It's bi-weekly update, next update's Friday, so I'd hope to have it by then. That's great. Hey, John, could I maybe be included in that too? I just, I'm just curious what that experience looks like so far. Absolutely. Thank you. Yes. I have added a question in the last item in the agenda in regards to WIP limits. If we are planning to use something like classes of services, classes of service, and if we are planning having different WIP limits for different classes of service, if we use them, 
I don't know if you are familiar with uh, the class of class of service term, which is used in Kanban, but we have things that are like standard issues, expedite, things that needs to be delivered in a specific date, for instance. And I am just wondering if we are planning using something like that and then defining different whip limits for these different classes. Would they also be um, considered like like bugs, performance features, um, backstage? Which each of would each of those be a separate class, or is this more? I, I, I wouldn't say so. I think it's more about like the the most common classes of service that I'm aware of are like expedite things that can't wait in queues, standard features or bugs or whatever, things that have a due date that if we don't deliver in that specific due date, will like be uh, penalized or will lose some market opportunity or something like that. And there is another one that I don't remember from the top of my mind, that, but those are the three that I remember from the top of my head. Yeah, so I don't know if we've defined using classes of services um, explicitly yet. Um, I think the idea for now is if something is a high priority that um, we need to get, uh, the idea we have of having separate um, columns with, with limits is that if something needs to get into a column that is over the whip limit, we now have the ability to move that thing to the top of the list but then the thing on the bottom of the list should get moved should get moved back um, because what i don't want to have happen is you know everything be considered the highest class of service and then we ruin the whole idea of yeah. the whole value that's my main concern as well like having this is why i think it's important to like if we have a limit of how many things we can expedite at the same time we don't run into this kind of problem yeah, it's definitely a good point. Anyone else have anything else? Around uh, by the way, classes? just uh, one other question. Maybe it's mentioned already in the for the Jira importer. Is it a EE only feature, or is it for everyone? Or is it like? A... Uh, I mean, the intention is it for it to be everyone. Now, I think the question comes in: what does that what does that entail? And what are just, there any? Yeah. Just okay. to know yep. from the code perspective, how do I engage it? And so on, for, for me personally, now for, for the marketing and other stuff, I'm not aware <laughs> enough. No, but I'm just asking him to know how to, to arrange the code uh, in regards to that. So, yeah. Okay. No, that's a great question. Yeah. No, I mean, the, the, the goal is that, you know, anybody on using GitLab who wants to switch to Jira can, can use this. Or yeah, switch it was just not specified. So I was wondering so that I don't have to rewrite it later on. So. No, perfect. Yeah. Cool. All right. I think that is everything. It's great chatting with you all. And I also appreciate you all. Bye. <laughs> See you again. Have a good week.